Have you ever swooned over photos and videos of minimalist interiors and wanted to achieve something similar in your own home? But you weren't quite sure where to begin. Here are 10 steps to get you started. Now I should say, I'm not talking about homes for people who subscribe to and practice the lifestyle movement of minimalism. Still, it probably wouldn't hurt your interior if you were a minimalist in some regard. Step one, this little guide isn't about building a new home or doing a complete renovation to achieve that crispy aesthetic. Instead, it's about working with the bones you currently have. Now with that in mind, you wanna take things slow and maybe just focus on one room at a time. Perhaps start with the bedroom or the living area and make your way around your home until you've simplified everything. Step two, the next step is working out what is essential to each room which will be highly personable depending on what the function of that room is and what you deem is necessary for you. But you need to be critical and honest with yourself. For example, some key furniture pieces will be essential for particular rooms, like a bed in a bedroom, believe it or not. But ask yourself if that 12 person dining table set is actually essential, or maybe you could get by with just eight. Also consider things like lighting, floor coverings, what storage is needed, etc. Step three, since I touched on it just before, let's talk about furniture. Now the furniture you bring into your home should reflect your values and what you deem is important. You should also consider the size and the layout of the room and determine how many furniture pieces are needed in said room. Minimalist interiors favor light and airy furniture with simple forms and those clean lines. Oh, and, and by airy, I mean pieces that aren't heavy in appearance, not inflatable furniture. Step four, once you've worked out the furniture direction, next is to consider color. Now, while typically minimalist interiors are seen as stark white rooms, that isn't necessarily a rule, but I would stick to subdued earthy tones and colors and avoid the vibrant reds, yellows, blues, and greens, although hot pink is acceptable. Step five, what's currently hanging on your wall, sitting on your floor and placed upon your shelf or that kitchen bench top? Whatever it is, remove it all. Put it in a corner somewhere, but just take everything off your surfaces. You'd be surprised how much clutter can exist. Now, before you click off this video in a fit of rage and claim that all minimalist interiors are devoid of personality, let's discuss that in the next step. Step six. Now it's time to put those things back, but be far more intentional. Consider one or two statement art pieces on the wall, some beautiful books and plants on the shelves, with perhaps maybe just two or three of your most treasured souvenirs from your travels. Focus on the items that you absolutely love. Just try not to put everything back, as minimalist interiors is about reducing the visual clutter to allow our eyes and brains to rest. Step seven. As I alluded to at the beginning, you don't need to be a minimalist who only owns 50 things and sits on the floor because a couch is deemed too much clutter. However, a minimalist interior can be a rather calming environment, free from visual distractions. However, can you truly relax knowing that your cupboards are full of stuff that you haven't looked at in years, just weighing you down? So it wouldn't hurt to do some decluttering. And one way that I do this is through two simple questions. Does that item have a practical or valuable purpose in my life? Do I genuinely love it? If the answer is no to both, then I look to remove it. And we recently decluttered the home office slash second room in our apartment and we just felt lighter walking in after all that clutter was removed. Step eight. So what do you do about the cleaning products, TV remotes, essential documents, books you can't just throw away and the hay for your bunny rabbits? You will need storage of some sort. Now bookcases and open shelving should only be reserved for displaying items. So avoid stacking your work binders on the shelf. Instead, opt for cupboards, sideboards, or any storage with doors to hide everything away. One tip is to have a place for everything. Where does your toaster go? Where are your spare light bulbs? Where do you keep your batteries? Step nine. Now, Mies van der Rohe probably won't be pleased with this step, as usually decorative elements are forbidden in minimalist design, as the design should be the beauty. However, our home should reflect who we are, our loves, and our interests. And a way to communicate this is through the decor. So look at rugs and cushions, sculptures, vases, pot plants, etc. that really speak to you. 
Just don't go overboard. Remember, less is more. Step 10. The last step is to simply enjoy the space that you created for yourself and take those Pinterest worthy photos to show off. Do be prepared to accept the fact that your room, home or apartment won't look like that 24 seven. But don't get disheartened, nor do any of the homes you see on Pinterest, on Instagram, or even on my own YouTube channel. It's worth remembering that your vision of a minimalist interior might be different to Pinterest or Instagram, or even mine, and that's perfectly okay. It should be reflective of you. If you have kids and your mum is living with you, your needs for the interior will differ from that of a single university student living in a share house. But hopefully these 10 steps will help you curate and create a more calming and relaxing interior that inspires you to live your life more intentional and simple.